Before we get into it, I got one more result here. This is this Connecticut. Uh, it's, uh, in the race for Connecticut governor, incumbent Democrat Ned Lamont has defeated Republican Bob Stefanowski. Although the race is still a complete toss up when it comes to guessing which one is which. <laughs> Folks, a man who will know the answer to that, my first guest is CBS News chief political analyst and anchor of CBS News Primetime with John Dickerson. Please welcome back to The Late Show, John Dickerson. <laughs> Now uh, you, you've seen all the all the breaking uh, breaking uh, races that we talked about. Is there something can before we start? Is there something yeah. you can break right now? Well, our uh, producer Ann Shu just sent me that Arizona CBS um, identifies Arizona governor and Senate both as lean Democrat at this at this moment. Okay. So that's before. I mean, you know, that's just a prognostication. But of course, those you know, the Arizona Senate race is one Democrats have to hold if they want to say control of the Senate. And obviously, in Arizona, you've got a governor uh, candidate, uh, Carrie Lake, on the Republican side, who is a thorough election denier, but... and has said that she will accept the results if she wins. Right. And right. you've got an election denier running for Fincham, running for Secretary of State, who has said a version of of the same thing. And Blake Masters, running for the Senate seat, also has denied and then has tried to kind of moderate as he has on a number of different positions. But anyway, that's where that's going. And it's been kind of in keeping with the night, which is that it's um, not the overwhelming. If something's leaning Dem, that means it's it's going in a Democratic direction. Um, mm -hmm. And that's kind of been where the night's been going relative to people's expectations. Well, first of all, thank you for coming over. I know that we borrowed you from CBS News midterm coverage. And I don't, I don't want to be late here. I'm going <laughs> to stuff you back in the pneumatic tube and shoot you back over to the broadcast <laughs> hey, center because yeah. I can't afford the late fees. <laughs> okay. A as you're saying, so we, we, we may not know. We may not know. We've got Schrodinger's election here so far. Right. It, it, it's, we, we, we don't know all the results. What is valuable for us to know so far? And how is tonight comparing to the expectations that were being built in polling, in reporting, and let's say on like 538, that people refresh on a minute-by-minute -minute basis leading up to elections like this. Is, is, it, is, it, is it overturning these expectations? Yes, but a lot of things like 538 and a lot of the polling would have said, here's what might happen, but it's within a range. Right. Um, and we'll know by the end of the night whether we're even within the range. But I think at the moment we're still... At the moment, things are not turning out the way Republicans thought. If you look at the races, they had hoped, they had sort of three scenarios, and they're reflected in three races in Virginia, the 2nd, the 7th, and the 10th District. They basically, Kevin McCarthy was in the 10th District on uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. In other words, that's a deep blue area. Joe Biden won that with 58% of the vote. Terry McAuliffe won it with 5% of the vote. So if you're spending time there, you really think you're going to win in deep blue territories. They didn't win in the 10th district, and they didn't win in the 7th district either. So in Virginia, Republicans have picked up one seat of the three they kind of thought they were going to get. So expectations are, are, they are underperforming relative to expectations. That doesn't mean they won't still take control of the House. Mm -hmm. At the moment, they have enough seats that they've won, that they've flipped, to take control of the House. Then the key question is, what kind of House are you in control of? And we can, we can talk about that. He only has to pick up five to right. become the next speaker. And it's a fait accompli that he would be the speaker, do you think? Well, I don't know. If you only pick up six, then every man or woman's a king. Because you've got such small margins, everybody can say, well, if you, you, know, you can't really afford to lose my vote. When you, when you win a speakership, you want to have a big margin. So you can allow people to be kind of crazy and over there. And think about what it's been like to be Republican speaker. Newt Gingrich became speaker and ultimately was pushed out. And he said that the ultra-conservative members in his coalition were cannibals. Then John Boehner, who was pushed out, he called them terror political terrorists. So McCarthy may very well be speaker, but he may have a very restive caucus that makes his life very difficult. And with a small margin, that makes it even more difficult. Now, one thing that I've heard you talk about is that there's very little split ticket voting anymore. But you're seeing some of it yeah. this time around. Where are we seeing sure. some evidence of In that? In New Hampshire, so Governor Sununu, the Republican, was reelected by a wide margin. But then uh, Baldock, the uh, Republican Senate candidate, was beaten rather handily by Maggie Hassan, the Democrat. So there you had voters who were voting for the Democrat for Senate 
but voting for the Republican for governor, or they were voting for the Republican for governor and then just leaving the voting booth. In, in Georgia, though it hasn't been called yet, the governor's race, Brian Kemp, won handily, but I think about 2 million votes. Herschel Walker at the moment is at about 179, which means 200,000 voters in Georgia, Republicans, either voted for Kemp Warnock, Republican Democrat, or just Kemp and left town, or, you know, left the voting booth. When you came out here, where did that race stand? Because when I came out here to start the show, it was four tenths of one yeah. percent, with neither candidate having 50 percent. That's exactly right. And you've also, so neither has 50 percent, and they may not. Chase Oliver, who's the third person running, who has two percent of the vote, may make this a runoff. If it's a runoff, that means December 6th, there will be another election. And just what like could, last time. Yes, just like last time. And then what could happen is, if we get to basically the Republicans and Democrats get what they would need, basically the entire control of the Senate could do come down to Georgia. The entire political world between now and December 6 could move to Georgia, and that race between just Warnock and Walker could be what it all comes down to for control of the Senate, and then everything will go bonkers. Well, on, on that bonkers note, we're going to take a little pause <laughs> here, take a commercial break, and we'll be right back with more John Dickerson, everybody.